Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about kind of the health crisis first, and then we'll get into the economic and policies and things there. Uh, yeah. The virus has shut down entire societies, right? I mean, countries, et cetera. What's yeah. kind of your take on, uh, is the health crisis uh, warranted in the sense of the response we have on the health side? Uh, are we doing enough, not enough? Kind of how, how do you think through that? Yeah, uh, you know, there have been two other coronaviruses circulating through our economy for on a regular basis. They're annual now. They're part of now our annual flu season. Uh, so this coronavirus is different in that it's much more contagious, but much less deadly, right? So, but when you put those two together, the much more contagious, it could, it could hit a lot more people. Uh, much uh, less lethal, well, maybe it, maybe it would be typical flu-like numbers, which are anywhere from, uh, in the United States, 30,000 to 70,000 a year. Now, it looks like this one's going to kill maybe 60,000. Uh, and I guess that's the only number we can really count on because we don't know how many people really have been infected. Two people in my, uh, in my sphere, meaning my household and household help, have been infected. Um, uh, so uh, I, I think, you know, when books are written about this, we'll say, okay, well, okay, that was an overreaction. And yes, there, uh, there, 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 are, uh, there is a group of people that we must protect when something is that contagious, uh, even if it is less lethal. And in this case, it was the, those with other lung compromised uh, diseases, uh, as well as maybe people with high blood pressure. We're not sure about that one yet. Uh, so, uh, uh, and, you know, a couple of things are, are happening because of this uh, virus. First of all, we could not have sequenced it in two days. China sequenced it in two days. Uh, it took us uh, five months to sequence the SARS virus back in 03. Uh, so that, that happened very quickly. Now, uh, China probably knew the sequence uh, uh, my guess is well before they shared it with us. Um, uh, and if we had had it sooner, we would have understood it better. Um, uh, but now I think uh, the other thing that we're learning, the tests that Abbott and Cepheid, which is owned by Danaher, uh, have put out, and I know Cepheid well because I owned it before Danaher um, bought it, uh, and really, really good company. They, they're actually based on old, old time PCR technology. It's old technology. But what got them to market as fast as they could get to market were two things. First of all, the sequencing of the virus. We understand exactly what it is and we understand how it's mutating too. Uh, that's thanks to companies like Illumina. And then the second is synthetic biology. So if sequencing is the ability to read the DNA of a virus, uh, synthetic biology is the ability to write the DNA of a, a, a virus. And that company is Twist. It's one of the most advanced out there. Not many people know it, but it's an amazing company. Uh, if they had not done those two things, Abbott and, and uh, Cepheid wouldn't have been able to develop the tests as quickly as they have. So that's good. And I think the other thing that's uh, coming out of this, is, there are two other things from a healthcare point of view. After, so the SARS epidemic in 03, it circled the world and then went poof, it disappeared. Unlike the other coronaviruses I mentioned to you. Uh, and so what happened during SARS, that was a crisis. I mean, this thing was, SARS was, the lethality of uh, SARS was at least 10%. Uh, Ebola was, gosh, it was, you know, well above 50%. And MERS was somewhere in between there. So again, this is much less deadly. We don't know how deadly it is because we don't know how many people have gotten it. We'll know after the fact. Um, so uh, back then, SARS, vaccines, like there was so much money pushed into uh, the, the development of vaccines. It went poof and the funding for vaccines dried up, and then nobody wanted to be in vaccines. All these big pharma companies sold their vaccine companies because they were m money pits, right? Now, again, we're, we're, now that we have new technologies like Moderna 
and Inovio and Arcturus. Moderna and Arcturus are based on RNA technology, Inovio on DNA technology. RNA, we've never seen it work. If it works, it's going to be amazing. And it'll be a very profitable, it's going to be a winner take most, you know, because these companies have developed libraries of data and are going to be able to at least get the licensing fees, royalties uh, on all of this. So I think royal, uh, vaccine is going to be a good place to be. And the other thing I think that this healthcare crisis has done has, is it's providing a lot of political cover. What politician is going to say, no, I don't want to pay for uh, testing for this, that, or the other disease, or I don't want to pay for vaccines. You know, we're not going to put that in the budgets. No, testing, which has also been, it's considered historically a commoditized business. And, and you have two big companies dominating um, uh, you have Quest and LabCorp in, in the old world, and it's mostly commoditized. Even their esoteric tests become commoditized just because they're so big. And now what's happening is you get a company like Invite or Gardent uh, or Personalis. Uh, some of these you may have heard of. What they are doing, I think this is going to be a winner take most world, like so many in the artificial intelligence world. Uh, they are gathering all the data. They have harnessed geneticists throughout the world, you know, these pools of geneticists, and they are beginning to develop tests uh, that are very precise uh, and uh, because they can. They've collected the right kind of data. So I think they are going to have so much more political cover than they have had historically. It's always been an area starved of funding. Uh, because everyone assumed it's commoditized. It's not. We have the convergence of um, DNA sequencing, artificial intelligence, and then CRISPR gene editing, uh, which is going to not only, uh, not only will we be able to create these tests so that to understand in a very personal way how your DNA is influenced, right, and, and what is impacted, what's, what your D, how your DNA is mutating, uh, they'll be able to figure that out, and then they'll be able to pull therapies off the shelf, or they'll be able to design them with gene editing to actually cure or reprogram your DNA and cure the disease. That's where we're going. Yeah. 